Now that you've watched the two videos on the Freudian perspective and kind of have an understanding of it, uh, let's dive into the characters of the book that we're going to be uh, examining closely with Lord of the Flies. Okay, so the setting of the book. The setting of the book is a deserted island in the Atlantic Ocean, and more importantly, the time, uh, the 1940s during World War II. Uh, the war is going to actually play a character in the book, so the boys are actually going to be fighting this war, and it's actually also the cause of why they're on the island. So we're going to be spending a lot of time uh, talking about what Golding's message is about war. So if we were to summarize this book in one simple one simple synopsis, it'd be a group of British adolescent boys must learn how to survive after their plane crashes on a deserted island. Sorry, ladies. Um, unfortunately, there are no female characters in this book. Um, but, you know, girls wouldn't be silly enough to get stranded on a deserted island anyways. All right, so let's go over some of the characters and keep that Freudian perspective of id, ego, and superego in the back of your mind as we go through them, okay? So if Freud is correct and all humans are innately evil and will go to those, um, you know, barbaric needs to survive, you're going to see that some of these characters will have to go through drastic changes to get back to that base level, and some of them um, are already there to begin with. Um, so let's let's take a look at this and what happens when a group of boys are are removed from their societal norms. Okay, so let's classify these into very simple terms. We'll we'll call them just good boys and bad boys. So let's go through some of the boys um, that you'll first see in the novel. First person that swims up to the island is Ralph. And Ralph is going to be uh, definitely your protagonist. Okay, He's a young teenager, so he's one of the oldest boys on the island. You're looking at adolescent age, 12, 13 years old. Okay, He believes in law and order. And throughout his entire time on this island, he's going to try to keep everyone together and to keep things civil and democratic. He believes that no person is greater than the, the other. And he's really going to try to stay true to that while they're there. Okay, um, He is also a natural leader. So even though he's never been in a type of leadership role before, uh, people gravitate towards him. When he talks, people listen. And his goal the entire time while on the island is getting rescued. Okay, so you're going to see him really struggling to keep the group together. Um, he's going to have temptations where he's going to want to give in to some of the fun that's occurring on the island. But um, you're also going to see a lot of internal conflict with him. How is he going to keep everyone together? All right, your next character is a boy named Piggy. And the sad thing about Piggy is that Piggy is not his real name. And as the reader, you never even get to learn his real name because while he's on the island, uh, this horrific nickname is the only name that he is ever called. So a little bit about him. Uh, Piggy is obese. And he complains about his asthma. Um, at times, as the reader, you're going to get a little annoyed with Piggy uh, because he's going to use that excuse a lot to stop him from uh, participating in some of, the, some of the labor that needs to be done on the island. Um, but he's extremely intelligent. He is the brains of the island. He has got the best ideas. And at times, you're going to be kind of mad at the group of boys, too, of why wasn't he chosen the leader? And the reason why he wasn't chosen is he's also extremely self-conscious and he wants to be liked by his peers. So there are times when he even puts himself in positions where he doesn't like it, but he wants more than anything to be accepted, especially by Ralph. He wears glasses, and these glasses are going to play a significant role on, on the island. Um, so it, just the fact that he has the spectacles makes him an important character. And like Ralph, he believes in law and order. He gets very upset if, if the boys start acting out of societal norms. 
and wants everyone to get along and to work together toward the common goal of getting rescued. And unfortunately, um, he is the source of, of bully, like he is the one that gets bullied the most on the island, um, especially, especially by Jack. Okay, let's move on to Simon. Simon, like Piggy and Ralph, uh, believe in law and order, that things should be done a certain way. Um, he's adventurous and he's also independent. He's not afraid to go off by himself. And Simon becomes one of the most intriguing characters in the book um, just because um, he is able to separate himself from the boys at times um, to do what is right. Um, you're going to hear a lot about him um, in chapter 8 and chapter 9 um, where he is ultimately like he completely changes um, the boy's perspective and the plot from the rest of the book. All right, now let's go on to the bad boys. So from Freud's perspective, these characters um, are already at their basis level. Um, so it's not going to, you're not going to see the, the large transformation in them as you will in other characters. Okay, so the first one of these bad boys is Jack. And Jack is the oldest boy on the island. He's, he's 13, 14 years old. And from very early, you're going to see it um, in chapter two, that he already has a temper. And it's going to become more explosive um, and and uh, more volatile throughout the course of the book. The irony is, is that when this boy lands on the island, um, he's a very demure uh, choir boy. He's a British choir boy when they land. And more than anything, he wants to be the leader of this group. He feels he's entitled to it uh, because he was head choir boy. Um, but as you can see, um, he, he'll have a very, very different perspective on how things should go on the island. Okay, while Ralph tries to get things in order and maintain democracy, um, Jack is, is not. Jack believes that they are there to have fun and that uh, that should be their point, uh, not getting rescued. Okay, uh, the good news is um, for survival purposes, um, it's, it's great that Jack, uh, when he lands, he has a pocket knife with him. However, as the reader, you need to ask yourself, why is a 13-year-old carrying a knife on a plane? He didn't know he would end up on an island. He didn't know that um, he was going to need it for survival. So it's just one of those little tiny things that Golding, um, Golding puts into the plot that kind of shows something about his character. Um, it, kind of, it kind of comments to his bully mentality. He is the kid that would bring a knife to a fistfight because um, of saving face. He would never, ever want to appear weak to someone. And like I said earlier, his goal on the island is having fun. Roger is another one of the ones that we'll classify as a bad boy. Um, he's Jack's sidekick. He's his little toady. Um, and he likes to pick on little kids, the littlest boys on the island. He likes to um, make them the butt of his fun. He likes to kick over sand castles and just kind of torment them. He's uh, very quiet, though. Um, you won't see his temper emerging as fast as you did with Jack's. Um, his anger is kind of under the surface level a little bit. And at the end of the book, we will see that he's the only one that's truly capable of murder on this island. So at the end, we'll be debating which one of these two are more, are more um, quote-unquote evil or id, if it's more Roger or it's more Jack. So here are some of the other characters. Okay, the first that we have are Little Ends. And these are the names, this is the generic name given for all the small children on the island. So anyone under the role of five. Now, what's interesting about the Little Ends is that, um, one, they kind of develop this little society of their own. The big kids sort of take care of them, but at times these little kids are have to fend for themselves, right? Now, you can see that the, the big kids on the island, um, even, even Jack and, and, and Ralph, um, they truly don't really care about the kids uh, because they don't even take the time to learn their names. They just throw a generic uh, category of little ones at them. 
we also have Bill and Robert, and you're going to see um, they'll play more of a role um, towards the end of the book, but at the beginning of the book, they are just minor characters. But two that you should pay attention to are Sam and Eric, and these are twin brothers who are always together. They're two of the older boys on the island, um, yet they are completely dependent on each other. They do everything together. And Golding is even going to use a syntax to show that to show that they're always together. Instead of calling Sam his name and then Eric his name, um, everyone refers to him as one name, Sam and Eric. So their name is connected. Uh, just it shows the connection that they have that they're always together. So now that we've gone through some of the characters, um, I want you to take a look at what each of these would do. And how would Freud characterize them at the beginning? We're going to be looking at, at what role society plays and how it keeps um, these once demure choir boys um, from truly embracing id um, and the role, that, the role that laws and order play on their morality. Okay, so let's get started with this novel.